Hi everyone, this is Christina Sanchez Lopez calling from Northern Illinois and I'm here with my colleague Teresa Young. Hi, my name is Teresa Young, as Christina said, and I'm um, joining Christina uh, to, uh, oh, and there's our PowerPoint, that's great. I'm joining Christina and I'm coming from Perry Sound, Ontario, Canada. So um, we are putting our heads together and uh, wanting to share with you a little bit about what we were going to uh, speak about at CABE. So we're sorry that we're not able to to see you, um, but we're uh, excited about the possibility um, to at least touch base until next year and share a little bit about what we were going to present um, uh, just next week, actually, at CABE. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Teresa. And then here um, is a link to some multilingual resources that we um, have kind of put together uh, that we share with uh, colleagues and we just updated it for for you all. Um, so uh, we're going to we're going to highlight some of them. There are many on the two sheets that are in this folder, uh, but we're going to highlight just a, a few. And um, so in the in, in light of uh, the remote learning uh, period of schooling um we wanted to say kind of what our definition is of remote uh learning so we will have some online resources quite a few multilingual resources but also we have some ideas for a sort of paper pencil project things that students can do at um at home because we're aware that not everyone has the same access so to uh technology but um okay so here we go so these, uh, this was our um, agenda, or the portion of it we thought we could uh, touch upon in our in half, one half hour. So we really um, wanted to talk about the key components of effective instruction for multilingual learners, which we define as bilingual um, learner. That's our term for for the kids that we all work with: English language learners, ESOL, all those um, terms. We're, we're talking about in terms of multilingual learners or we call them dual language learners and um, with special educational needs and some of the key features that have come up in the research um, uh, review that we did um, are talk of really point to peer interaction uh, use of and development of their oral communication really focusing on comprehension and building conceptual knowledge as well as building and um, not only maintaining but continuing to develop their uh, bilingualism so um, we what we wanted to share today were some of the multilingual resources and just touch on the research that really uh, points to the need to support students with disabilities ability <laughs> to uh, use two languages and and really gr grow that and leverage it in their learning in school and in in life as an asset for them so the research um, that um, I just mentioned was based on a review that we did for this uh, book th uh, that we um, wrote together with, for Oxford University Press. And so they really help, um, helped us focus on the classroom-based research it, uh, for students, for um, multilingual learners with special educational needs. So kids who are already identified as having special educational needs and really looking, getting as close to the classroom as we could in terms of how uh, to support those kids and how to support teachers and supporting students. So that's the, um, the focus of what we're going to share today. It was really a great opportunity to look broadly at what research was available and Christina and um, conceived of this model <laughs> that really pulled some of the key components for uh, students with um, uh, disabilities uh, it, from the research. So we put the, we, we tried to focus with the, the learners at being at the center of everything we do. Um, and that they're uh, very, we come from a very strength-based perspective in terms of they have both uh, strengths and um, 
many resources that they bring to the classroom. And then also, uh, you know, their profile of unique challenges as students with disabilities. And then around that, we wrap instruction as uh, the first element of, of all the, the teaching um, that we do. And the, the key components within that were, um, are listed there in terms of being ensuring that our instruction for language learners is very meaningful and relevant uh, to have be embedded in a relevant context for them as well as as i said developing their conceptual understanding and their oral communication as a, a focus of our um, our work with them and we want to integrate the language literacy and content goals in in all the work that we do and then also affirm their multilingualism and their multicultural uh, resources that they they bring with them their di diverse backgrounds and communities and families and and all the the richness that that um, it, that that brings to their learning hmm. And then around that, we wrap interventions. So the interventions build on instruction. And as you see there, there we really need to coordinate and be strategic and it involves um, collaboration is the key to everything we do with, our, with these students. And then um, uh, from all of this is centered on a base or supported by the base of uh, culturally and linguistically responsive educational systems which really support both educators and allied service providers practitioners to to come from that asset orientation to really build look at the strengths of our students and our families um, and take what they're bringing with them and try and integrate that into our interactions with them and also the, our instruction and intervention. Um, so that's kind of the, the model in a nutshell, but we're really gonna focus on that multilingual, um, multicultural um, piece today in our time that we have together. So the research um, really uh, supports that multilingual learners with special education needs um, definitely benefit from being bilingual, as do typical language learners. So the next slide is, a, again, it's a snapshot of a, a whole wealth of research that's been accumulating um, looking at students with different kinds of disabilities, specific language impairment, um, autism spectrum disorder, uh, students with Down syndrome, so it's often more of a cognitive piece to their learning, and then also kids who, who are um, hearing impaired and have cochlear implants. So what the research, overall, the research is showing us that when we use both languages, the, their instructional language and their home language, that that really benefits their learning in many different ways. Some of these are very um, individualized interventions or small group interventions. Some are in classrooms, um, but it, it really, there's, there's no reason for us not to use kids' home languages. Um, when they have disabilities, it's, a, it's an asset that they bring to learning that we really want to leverage as uh, they continue to learn in schools. So that's, the, uh, again, a snapshot. Sorry. Just aware of our time. Well, and I'm realizing that our images cover up a very important part of this title because it should say children with disabilities are not disadvantaged. Oh, right? so should we take our pictures off and come back later? It's okay, but just so we know, that's... Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can't move that, can we? No, children okay. with disabilities are not disadvantaged by bilingual. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, so we'll go forward. Okay. So we're gonna look at multilingual resources uh, that we can use to really welcome uh, children's languages into the classroom. And in the, in the kindergarten classroom that I worked in for four years, we just started with greetings um, <laughs> to start that, uh, to normalize the, the idea that we're using home language. So that was just the, the entry poster that we had. And then we also took um, the words from the units that we, we worked through. It was an oral language focus in oral language early literacy focus in a tier two um, support environment for um, kids in kindergarten. And um, we, this unit was on family and friends. So we sent this home and asked parents to 
uh, tell us how they say those words in their home language and then also how they write it. So, and this is what came back. It was amazing. Um, the kids were able to, in circle, we were able to share how we said mother in, you know, in each of the languages. And the English speaking kids, you know, brought theirs back as well, because there's many ways that we refer to our family members. And the discussion was really um, generative because the kids started to compare and contrast and teach each other. So that it was a, it was a exciting how, given the structure, the, the kids really welcomed it. Um, so I, I just want to um, maybe go to the next slide, Christina, just time-wise. Oh, um, yeah, and this is an example also from a younger grade on collecting just different ways to um, say the different names of, uh, um, in math, right, for, for uh, geometric figures. And so again, it can be, children can, make these at home, uh, but you know, um, having the model of just what are the languages in our classroom. And so this was re rectangle and different ways of saying circle and then examples of circles. And so students can make their, um, they can make their, you know, posters at home. Um, so the next area is around previewing in home language. Um, so again, different, um, examples we'd like to look at. One is um, Google language tools um, is a way to um, have students place concepts in the um, in the first box and then translate to different languages. So at the word level, um, students can like look up the different ways to say, you know, planet, the different planets is a solar system unit, and then they can make cards, um, you know, with English and then their, their language. On the other side with the pictures, um, this is something that we've done. Um, the other is um, to a, a website. Um, there's a whole section on my list around math resources. And so this, this has multilingual. I'm showing you the example from Spanish, but it has different languages. This one is the Vietnamese. So you can download um, PDFs of the different languages um, math. But again, in that section on the chart that you're going to get that's in the, in the folder, um, there are more math resources, multilingual math resources. There's a whole section also on world newspapers. And so I've used this with uh, teachers, actually a teacher's taught me about it, um, about uh, it has audio and the news in different languages. So families can use it, but also children can preview, students can preview um, and look at what's going on um, about certain events in their language first before you address it in English. So that previewing is really important. So um, Unite for Literacy is a book, uh, a book site for young children and it's all informational text, which Teresa and I always recommend starting as early as possible. So this is like pre-K through grade two. Um, and the, the um, the upper left-hand corner, it says English. So these are the books written in English, but also different, all the books have narrations in different languages. And so you can preview, the children can hear the um, story in their own language before they read it in English um, or they hear it in English. So that's something that can, you can coordinate home and school. Um, they can do the preview in their language audio and then um, hear it in and see it in English. Also, um, this whole site, uh, also if you click in the upper left hand corner, it'll tell you the books that are written in Spanish. So they're written in Spanish and they have audio in Spanish. Um, so it's a whole library. Oh, so this is an example. So the book that we uh, chose, and if you click on it, it'll tell you all the narration languages. So this is what it looks like when you when you click on that. So you can click, and every book has a little bit different uh, narration. So, and then do you see um, on, uh, below the text? This is a very easy one, but it, there are books with much more text in them. But so children can hear it first in their language and then read it in English. And this is another uh, book that um, site that has all these different languages. It's out of the UK and it starts very young and it goes to about grade, uh, no, to age 13 or 14 years old. Um, and it has books in all different languages uh, in English and then in all different languages. The narration is in English and then the text is in the different languages. So, um, and it's free, you, have, you can register and, and it's a nice platform for even doing classroom work with your students. And this is a site for older students from New York uh, University. And it has um, from elementary all the way up to secondary to grade 12, um, uh, multilingual glossaries of 
all different content areas. And you can't see it here necessarily, but when it gets into the upper grades, it doesn't just say math, it'll say algebra, geometry, calculus, it, you know, and the same thing for the sciences. As you go up in the grades, it's more specific. And then you, many people know New ZLA, um, it has book sets. There's a free part of it where they have book sets in English and in uh, Spanish. So, a lot, and, and then you can adjust the reading level. Um, so students can all be reading about the same thing, but a little bit different reading level. Um, and the next section is really about, uh, we, Teresa and I do a lot around dual language books and sharing them, but we're just gonna give you a little taste of that right now. Children can actually make them, um, or if you can find them online or, you know, they, we can order them for our families as well. Um, so this is from very young age. Um, students making, these are actually out of lunch paper bags and um, with foam pieces and construction paper. And so um, in many of our schools, when children come to uh, pick up uh, lunches or that lunches are delivered, breakfast and lunches, um, often the school districts are also sharing materials. So being able to share a lot of craft materials with students and children um, so that they could be making things at home. Um, that's, uh, these are just some more examples. This is for very young, uh, young hands. Um, and then this is uh, just a teachers finding the words for different concepts in all different languages, um, you know, charts so that they can continue to um, we find them online and then um, and then create books. And this is uh, one um, teacher made this for her visually impaired child. So you can see it's kind of raised so they can feel it and then very broad and bright um, images. This is another. One of the things I talk about uh, with teachers is that it's really nice to put the word in the home language at the top of the page and then English at the bottom of the page. So it's just another idea. And this is um, um, a multilingual book that was, was done collaboratively. So anytime we can have students connect, obviously virtually through, through the phone or you know, online um, to talk and, and make something together is really great. So um, obviously virtually, safe distance apart. <laughs> so this one um, is uh, a resource on my list and they're books that are, in Arabic and English, and they're for older students. They were developed by the students. Um, and um, when we had a, 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 the, a wa an initial wave of Syrian refugees. So um, th they're an example of some dual language books, just a little bit older that are available online that you can um, access um, in, that set, in that way. They're free as well, I think. They're just... Yes, yeah, that's right, Christina. And this is, um, I think this is on both our lists. Um, it, it's a website um, that enables you to make um, dual language books. So um, it's a free website that you can access. And I think in the next slide, Christina, it shows a couple samples. So there's a number of uh, different languages you can use, and then there's art tools as well. So parents and or teachers, um, family can work together and make a book in um, you know, multiple, uh, in two languages for sure, then they can post it. Um, and um, I think they can narrate it now too in this website. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so oh. that's a, another freebie. I think it works on a tablet as well, right, Teresa? Yes, it, I think it's, yeah, I think it's a tablet or a Mac maybe mm -hmm. um, that it works on, yes. So another, um, a group of resources that we find um, um, that we share often is are those to support parents in terms of continuing to use home language and how important it is and how it supports their um, their children uh, in life uh, the the asset of being bilingual and then and also academically how important it is and I think you'll you're going to share the first resource <laughs> sorry Christina yes no that's okay sorry um, uh, so, and I showed Google Translate earlier as just at the word level, um, just translating individual words is, is fine. It's, it's, and the other thing that's really exciting, um, so parents feel like they can support their children is 
to actually translate a website. So this is an academic website. It's uh, free. It's not a commercial site. So you can put the URL on the left hand side and then you choose the language. And the reason I put this one on here, because this I actually did this with a seventh grader once and um, he spoke Thai and he didn't speak a lot of English, but they were doing a lesson on cells. And so um, I just did this and then I clicked on the little arrow there and then it translated the website. And I have to tell you, his face really lit up when um, he saw this because he realized, wow, you know, you know, <laughs> I, I, I know what's going on. So I just like moved over to my seat. <clears throat> and as the lesson continued, the child was able to participate more uh, in English. And later the teacher said that she didn't realize he knew so much English, um, but when he was a little more confident. So children can be looking at things and sites um, on their own in their home language before you do something uh, in English. Um, and this is, it's a cut off a little bit there, but you can, this is a Mama Lisa, it's for very young children. And it's a site for um, song, it's really for young, very young children. So, um, or parents to use with their young children. And it has songs and rhymes and finger plays from all over the world. And it's, I don't know if we've already said this, but they're all free. So these are all free resources. And um, so it's really great in the early years to be singing these songs in your home language while you're learning, um, you know, while the children are learning English, but rhyme and rhythm, all those things are really kind of tough to do in your second language, but there's no reason why children can't develop all those skills and have fun, right, uh, with their young um, children in their home language. So this is another free resource for parents and it's provided in um, all these languages listed um, at the uh, top there, there's a number. And it's print material to um, share with parents in terms of um, activities that they can do at home. Um, and there's a few uh, listed there. So uh, there's singing and reading with your child, routines, um, um, a, a, a number of um, just like social interaction kinds of um, uh, activities. And then also, um, uh, some information about uh, behavior management, a whole variety of family uh, information pamphlets. And I think is the next slide another one? Oh, here's it's just a little um, a little bigger, but in terms of the languages that are available and some of the activities that uh, you might be able to share or link for parents to download or have a look at if they have access um, to uh, internet. Mm -hmm. Then the next one is a set of um, their brochures. And then also this is part of a PowerPoint to share with parents about how important it is to continue to use your home language and how it's really to the child's, their child's advantage to have a second language in school. Um, and, uh, and, and, and that's a message we want to continue to give parents, especially when they're spending more time with their children um, at, the, at this point uh, for many of them. Um, and, uh, so the, and then the brochures are in multiple languages as well. Yeah, there's a, a whole list of languages. And the PowerPoint is in English. So you can either view the information or, or you can print it off and, uh, and uh, send it home if that's an option for a hard copy. The next uh, resource, also free, is um, uh, developed by our, the Speech Language Pathologist uh, Multilingual Multicultural Interest Group of Ontario. And we um, created like one page, there are one page handouts for parents. And it, it, we flipped it a little, we talked about how reading to your child develops their language skills. And we encourage parents to read in, in home language and, um, uh, and just ways that you can read to your child to to generate talking about the stories or um, newspapers or whatever it is that you um, are sharing with your child. So that's downloadable and you could give the links to parents or uh, again, um, create hard copies for the parents that you work with. So that was uh oh that's good okay so we were concerned that we weren't going to have enough time so this is great because what we wanted to encourage you to do is to just take one thing um or one resource to explore uh, one strategy um to consider to really um 
to, to focus on how in this time when so much of the instruction is distant, either um, online or um, um, through paper, pencil sorts of things, how you can include your child's, uh, the, your students' home languages in the activities and the, um, the instruction that you're providing to them. And that it's, it, it certainly supports them in engaging in learning it, it helps to leverage their learning. And for kids who with disabilities, it's, actually, it's such a strong um, uh, resource for them mm -hmm. to continue to develop, um, as I said, like both academically and as a life skill to, to be able to communicate with everyone or more people in their environment um, uh, with, by, by using their home language and keeping them connected to family. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know if there's something else you want to add, Christine. Oh, here's our, our, um, our what is it? It's our contact information. <laughs> Thank you. And um, that uh, uh, if you had questions or your, uh, about the resources um, or uh, any other um, resources that you're using, you're welcome to share those. Um, and or be in touch. And as Christina said, both our multilingual resource lists are available at the it, it, within the uh, folder that the tiny URL um, connects to. And then also we are working with Paradad, as Christina mentioned, and we will be continuing to develop online resources. Um, and uh, so we encourage you to check the website. Um, and and in for other resources that you may need or, uh, or might be interested in. Uh, that's another avenue for um, supporting teachers, educators, and paraprofessionals as well. And I wanted to um, just go back to the, the URL. I probably should have put it at the end. Oh, good, but, yes. Yeah, but I just, uh, maybe if you want to, um, if you want to, oops, if you want to jot that down um, or take a picture of it, um, just so you have um, access to those resources. So it's a, it's a set of two documents with multiple pages of many, many resources. But again, we didn't want to overwhelm. We just wanted to highlight some. And uh, we hope that you um, take, you know, one thing that can support um, your multilingual learners with and without special education needs. We want to take this moment to just ask you um, please take care of yourselves. You're taking yes. care of your own, you know, children often and educating our children and uh, supporting them and their families. So we ask you to take care of yourselves and um, we hope we get to see you soon um, in person and hopefully Kabi 2021 will we'll be together. So take care of yourself and Teresa. Yes, all the best. Be safe. And yeah, we look forward to, um, to meeting you in, uh, in 2021. Thanks, Christina. Yes, thanks, Teresa. I'm just going to end with our contact information again. And okay. please, um, please uh, email us. Oh, there it is. <laughs> email us with anything that any questions you may have. And we will talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye now. Bye.